the beginning of time, he was with us. And it's so important. We're going to continue our uh, message of being in the Word this week and how important it is to know everything about him. So sing these words and give him praise this morning. Of what you so graciously give to us 
So today, Father God, may you bless these offerings and tithes as they come before you for your kingdom work. In Jesus' name, amen.
Gracious and loving God, Lord, we come before you this day, grateful for the day you've given us. Lord, as we gather together this day, we, we ask that you would bless this offering, Lord, that it be used for your kingdom work, Lord, and that we might have the joy of being joyful givers today. <clears throat> In Christ's name we pray, and all God's people said. As we uh, come to our time of uh, prayer request, Bob, uh, Anthony, it wasn't working because I didn't have it on, point one. I am a mess this morning. My wife is out of town, and she'll be returning today. She was at her uncle's funeral yesterday, but I forgot to get the camera out and film. I, you can tell my wife I just don't do good without her, okay? <laughs> she does so many things behind the scenes that you'll never know. I had to wake her up this morning because I couldn't get the computer on with the password uh, on the presenter program, and it was just a, so anyway, she did not have a restful morning because of me, but it was still, anyway, I, I just wanna tell you I, I miss her. <laughs> and I'm a mess. But we do have some other uh, concerns we wanna lift up this morning. Um, this morning, I wanna share with you that Betty Monroe passed away yesterday. Uh, I was able to be up with me, with Nancy and, and yesterday, and, Lynn, um, yesterday um, after the passing of Betty, uh, she passed away yesterday afternoon and uh, pretty sure, almost 100% sure that her services will be here on Wednesday. Uh, so we have visitation here Wednesday 3 to 8 here at the church. And then on Thursday, I'll have visitation from 10 a.m. to 1 here at the church. Uh, Gilroy and Ross is uh, involved and they've already know the time so we're pretty set on that. Unless the weather got really bad for some reason, that is the plan. Right now they'll finalize today, but uh, 3 to 8 uh, Wednesday visitation and, and 10 to 1 on uh, Thursday morning and a service at 1 for Betty. So uh, keep uh, the Monroe family in your prayers. Uh, keep Donnie Spalding in your prayers. His cancer is growing a little bit and he's got a follow-up appointment to figure out next steps with that. Um, uh, are there other ones we want to lift up this morning? Brooks. Brooks, yeah. Lift up Brooks, who had a th three-month-old that has RSV. Uh, keep Brooks in your prayers as he uh, is uh, beginning to respond to a little treatment there. So we'll just keep Brooks in your prayers as well. Are there others this morning you want to lift up? Yes. Yes, I want to lift up uh, Josiah Wayne. He's my grandson. He's in Riley's Hospital. Josiah? Josiah. Okay. In Riley. So keep... Keep Joel Saya in your in your prayers for sure. Are there others this morning? Unspoken, please. Unspoken? Yes. Uh, my sister in law, Nisha. Nisha? She's uh, well, incrementally better and in a rehab. Incrementally better in in rehab. So continue prayer as she continues to get a little bit better. Are there others this morning? Yes. Your great grandma, what? My great grandma's 90 years old. 90 years old? Well, that would, that would, with a zero, would indicate that we should have a birthday song. <laughs> we have another one behind me, I think, that we need to play a uh, sing birthday song today, too. Uh, uh, Megan, is that, is it, would that be true? Megan Crozier has a, a birthday that ends in a zero. I'll let you ask her the first number um, <laughs> yourself. But maybe we sing happy birthday right now, if we can. Happy birthday to Kansas City crowd that showed up last night to the football game 
and the, the other crowds are going to show up in the cold. I just want to, I want to give you props for being out on a cold morning uh, to come and worship the Lord. That is a joy when people can come. And, and, and I, it's also a joy when people know their limits and stay safe, too. So I understand that as well. So, uh, But uh, thank you for coming out this morning uh, and being in worship. Are there others this morning? Well, if not, we'll welcome our, our people that are watching online. I just want you to know that it, it's only a little bit late in the service because of me. So um, let's be at that time of prayer this morning. Gracious and loving God, Lord, we pause this morning to give you glory, Lord. We thank you for this chance to, to bring brothers and sisters in Christ and our family and friends, Lord, uh, uh, before you this morning. And we want to lift them up into your care right now. Lord, we lift up the Monroe family and the loss of Betty, Lord. We lift up the Ross family as they celebrated George's life yesterday as well. Lord, we want to lift up Danny, uh, Donnie, um, Father, Lord, as he uh, is continuing uh, some treatment for cancer, Lord, to just lift him up into your care. Lord, we want to lift up uh, uh, Brooks this morning, Lord, as he is battling RSV, Lord, in, in the hospital. Lord, just uh, continue to be with those that are treating him and watch after him. Lord, we want to lift up Josiah as well, Lord, who's, who's in the hospital. Lord, just watch over him and maybe be working with those that are treating him as well, Lord. Lord, we want to lift up Nisa, and Lord, in her rehab and incremental improvements. Lord, continue to be with that. Lord, we want to lift up the unspoken prayer request of our hearts, Lord, this morning. Lord, and, and you know the needs, so we ask that you would be in those. Lord, each and every moment, each and every day, Lord, we need you. Uh, we need you every hour, as the song goes. So, Lord, as we uh, come to you to petition you this morning, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We live in a world that's broken and incomplete without you. Lord, uh, restore us from our brokenness and heal us of, of, of our, all, all those things in our life, Lord. And, and may we return to you in the glory that you have for us. We give you glory this day and every day in the sweetest name of Jesus, and we pray as your Lord's Son has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the kids come on down front, please.
because they have a relationship. Somebody saw her over shoulder this message this week, okay? <laughs> You're right, you spend time with her, right? You spend time with her so you have a relationship. Esme and Joel have a wonderful relationship, don't you guys? Because you're best friends, aren't you? And you love spending time together, don't you? Do you absolutely love spending time? Do you love spending time with your sister? Be careful, say yes. <laughs> okay. Do you love spending time with your mom? You come to preschool here, don't you? You've heard the story already. You have that. No. Okay. We do not have a very good relationship. Okay. But you see, that's the thing about today. Pastor Joe's preaching about this, and I wanted to tell you guys a story about how we're supposed to have a relationship with God, just like Eden said. And how do you think we can have a relationship with God? Can you call him and say, Jesus, can you come down front, please? Please, Jesus. I don't see him. Do you see him? Yes. No, because he's in heaven. He rose again, and he's in heaven. So to get to know Jesus, we have a book called the Bible, okay? And it has all the information about him in it that we would ever need to know. We need to know his character because Eden's friend is very kind. Well, Jesus is very kind, and I know that because I read the Bible, and I pray, and I love to do worship. So those are ways that we get to build a relationship. Look at your neighbor. Look at your friend here at Children's Church and say, relationship. Relationship, that's right. We need to have a really close relationship with Jesus. So put your hands up like this. Okay? Do you see this? This is a separation right here. See? There's gaps, right? In our fingers. We don't want to know Jesus like that, do we? Because it would be separated. There would be gaps in our relationship. We want to know him like this. Can you do that? Do you feel how tight that gets? That's everybody wants you to walk around tell your mom, your dad, your grandma, your friends, your cousins, everybody today. That's how we're supposed to know Jesus. Can you show them out there? Maybe they can do it. There you go. We want to know Jesus and have a relationship like this by reading his word every single day and more than once a day sometimes. Do you agree with me? Um, maybe I shouldn't ask you. But do you agree with me? No. <laughs> He's my favorite right now. Okay, let's say a prayer, okay? Dear God. Thank you for today. Thank you for the Bible. We want to read it and learn who you are and be really close to you. Amen. All right. Head on up the children's church, you guys. You did a good job. As the children left this morning, as they leave and, and go back, I want to remind us of what uh, I introduced to us last week was our, our, our 2024 uh, uh, goal, our 2024 idea of what, what I think that we need to be doing as, as people of God, and it's walking in the Word. Uh, walking in the Word of God is, is, is an important part of our life. Last year, we talked about walking in faith with joy, but this year, we want to talk about walking in the Word of God, getting into God's Word, and, and really holding on tight to that. Last week, I, I suggested a couple possibilities uh, for you, uh, maybe given your last five minutes of your night before you go to bed to the Scripture and reading that Word of God to fill your heart, or maybe getting up in the morning and your first five minutes reading the Word of God, or maybe even bookending the day with the Word of God and ending it with the Word of God, uh, how more informative would that be? I would say one of the most powerful things in my life and most powerful things in most people's life is one of the last things that you take in, right? If that's reading or, or watching or whatever, stuff that we take into our life has influence, amen? And, and what should we have, want to influence our life more than the God of Word, God, God, God of Word, words God uh, in our hearts. So God's Word we want to take into our hearts. So we want to be obedient to what God has called us to. Last week we talked about this scripture, that all scripture is, is useful for teaching, rebuking, and correcting us in our life. That, 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 that's part of what God does with us. He wants to teach us. He wants to, he wants to correct us. He wants to take uh, those things. So God breathes scripture for you and for me. And it is important in our life and how we live it. So who wants to be wise is, is, is kind of there. Psalms 1 uh, puts it this way. I'm going to read that scripture from Psalms 1 this morning. Blessed is the one who doesn't walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the ways of 
that takes or sit in the company of mockers, but who delights in the laws of the Lord and meditates on the laws day and night. The person is like a tree planted by the stream of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose light leaves do not wither whenever the, they do prosper, nor so the wicked, that they are like chaffs that are wind blown away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor the sinner in the assembly of the righteousness. For the world for the Lord for the Lord watches over the ways of the righteous, but the ways of the wicked lead to destruction. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When we hear those words uh, proclaimed, when we hear the thoughts of that, uh, how many uh, have, have ever heard of the, the, the wisdom of, of children? Anybody? The wisdom of babes, little ones? Anyone get, ever gotten some wisdom from their kids? All the parents should be raising their heads, especially if their kids are in there and hand I've got all kinds of wisdom <laughs> from children. But I will give you some examples from Sermon Central, some, some examples of, uh, of wisdom from children. Uh, Patrick, age 10 says this, never trust a dog to watch your food. Amen. <laughs> Anyone have that experience? <laughs> Michael, age 14, says, when your dad is mad and asks, do I look stupid? <laughs> Don't answer him. <laughs> Michael also says, never tell your mom her diet isn't working. <laughs> Randy, age nine, says, stay away from prunes. One wonders how he discovered that. <laughs> Naomi, age 15, says, if you want a kitten, start by asking for a horse. <laughs> Lorna, age nine, said, felt markers are not good or lipstick. <laughs> Joel H. Chitt says, don't pick on your sister when she's holding a bat. <laughs> and all my Joel's nine, so. Of course he's dead, he's nine. It's not my Joel. <laughs> I was looking at him. And Ellen, age eight, never try to baptize a cat. <laughs> Cats don't like water too well, right? There is wisdom in this world, right? There's wisdom from one another. We have wisdom. We pick up wisdom from each other. We have ideas of what it looks like. And there's worldly wisdom and there's godly wisdom. Amen? Uh, there's some things that you need to know in this world to get by. Amen? There's just stuff you need to know. Um, I've been watching. I was watching on the internet not too long ago. And it was like people making fun of their kids for not knowing certain things. And then the kids' response, right? Like uh, a generation that doesn't know how to do this. But then their kids' response. They don't know how to do certain things, and they're kind of like responding back in like what you don't know how to do, right? Uh, have you ever had that kind of scenario where there's one generation and another generation in the same room? Like they were talking about how their kids didn't realize what to do with a car. Now, I know a lot of us down here, we know what to do with our cars, right? How to take care of them and those kinds of things. But the daughter was calling to figure out uh, what she needed to do to to change her change her oil uh, and, and those kinds of things. So you know those kinds of things. And, and but when they were saying all these things that their kids couldn't do, then they were reminded of what they couldn't do. Who's your first call for tech help? Your child or whatever it might be. So there's always something that that that, that somebody has more wisdom than us. Amen. There's always someone a little bit more wise through you or me. But God's wisdom is the supreme wisdom, right? God's wisdom is the wisdom for you and I that, that really takes hold, that takes root for us. It, it, it is this idea of wisdom. The psalm, the first psalm at one time didn't even have a number, but now it has a number. Psalm number one. It was thought to be kind of like the beginning of, of the book, kind of the idea. It would, in the Hebrew, it, it, when it was in the Hebrew, it didn't have a number, but it was kind of that idea. But it talks about us living in joy and obedience. How many of you think of joy and obedience in the same sentence? Anybody? I have to be obedient. Does that bring you joy? As Christians, it should, right? Because we learned last year that joy isn't dependent on emotion or a feeling. It's something that comes from within, right? 
And if God is within us and we're living within God's will, then we should feel joy because we're obedient to him. Amen? But often, let's be honest, we don't feel that. Honesty is a good policy there, right? But the wisdom that the psalmist is talking is about is a twofold wisdom. There's two kinds of ways to live your life. God's way and the world's way, right? There's kind of two ways. The ways of God, which are eternal, or the ways of the world that can be temporary. Now, let's talk about the human condition. Where do we live? In the world, amen? So God says to be in the world, but not of the world. That's kind of a difficult thing for you and me sometimes. How is it that I can be in the world, but not of the world? It's by living into the truths of God, because God's truths are what we're supposed to be. The guidebook for you and for me are, is the word of God. When God, when we call upon the name of God, when we call upon the name of God, and we say, God, I surrender my life to you through your son, Jesus Christ, we have a responsibility then. Did you know we took on responsibility when we surrendered to God? You know what that responsibility is? God, I'm going to live for you. God, I'm going to walk in your ways. God, I'm going to be faithful to you. We say all these things to God, and then we say, oh, Lord, help me. Amen, right? And how does God help us do that? He provides us opportunities to learn through, his, through, through one another, through church, through all these things. But he also gives us the word. We have the word of God that's before us. We have that life manual, that instruction book that's before us um, that helps us do those things. If you never use the instruction book, what happens? It's hard to follow. Well, it's hard to follow, right? If we don't have instruction. The instructions are important. <laughs> things sometimes need to be there to inform us. God's truths are there for you and for me. It says, blessed is the one who doesn't walk in the steps of the wicked. So how are we blessed? When we don't walk in the steps of the wicked, right? When we don't walk in the steps of the wicked, we are blessed. When we walk in the ways of God, we're blessed. Last week I brought up a song that particularly speaks to my heart. Do you remember that song, anybody? The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. I'm going to sing it again. You can join me this time a little louder. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. It's an early pledge that children make when they learn that song. If, if they sang it, sometimes we don't even realize that what we're singing. Larry Johnson's famous for saying, listen to the words. Do you what, what did we say we stand alone on as Christians? The Word of God. That's the book for us even. We're singing that the, the Bible is our instruction book. It's a word for us. It's a, and the instructions for us is what we need for our life. The question at hand for us might be, what feeds our soul? What's feeding our soul? What kinds of things are we taking in that feed our soul? What is it that God is asking us to do, and how are we feeding our souls daily? Because if you're not feeding yourself daily, guess what? You're fasting a lot. And anyone been on a long fast? They can be hard. But if you don't ever eat, what happens? You end up dying eventually, right? Part of what we need is, is nourishment. And God wants us to be nourished in his word. Uh, that's, the, that's the way of the truth. So we, we see that. Um, I'll go on to read the rest of that verse in number one. Or stand in the ways of the sinners that does not take company of the mockers. And let's go on to verse two now. But those who delight in the ways of the Lord and meditate on his, his laws day and night. Make sure that you are meditating on what? God's words. The law. Of God's word. If God's word of scripture is, is for us, that we're to meditate it. And, and did you hear what it says? How often should we do it? Day and night. Hence a suggestion. Maybe get God's word in the morning and at night. So we can meditate on what God's saying. Sometimes we need to, to linger in scripture. 
There's all kinds of ways to read the Bible, isn't there? Isn't that great? There's all kinds of reading plans for the Bible, a year-long reading plan where you can get through the whole Bible in a year. There's, there's, there's reading plans where you can read it chronologically in the order that the events happen. There's ways that you can read it, Old Testament, New Testament. There's, there's some people that read just a, a, a verse for the whole year and meditate on that word. Uh, there's all kinds of different ways for you and me to be informed. Maybe we take a, a book of scripture and we read it for a month. There's all kinds of different ways to do that. But part of what we do is, is that we get engaged in what God's doing. To meditate on God's word it, it, it is, is kind of can be a slow process, right? It doesn't have to be really quick. I know when I was in seminary and I had to read uh, certain books for certain times, there was a process where you had to do it quickly. But if I'm going to just do it for a devotional kind of time, then I'm going to I'm going to linger a little bit in the Word of God. I'm going to I'm going to let that word speak to me. Sometimes I can read a chapter of the Bible in, in in ten minutes, and sometimes I can read a chapter of the Bible in ten days. It just depends on how long I'm lingering in what God is saying to me in the midst of that moment. There's different ways to read, and whatever way we're reading is good because we're engaging in the Word of God. If you ever want to know how to read the Bible a little bit better or need help, I'm here for you to help you out. Angie's here for you. David's here for you. We're here to help you get that opportunity. But there's other ones around you. Look at your neighbor. They may be just the perfect person to help you read. Uh, the word of God. They, they may have a system for you as well. But whatever we need to do, we need to be in that word because God wants us to be meditating in that. Do you remember anybody that asked for wisdom in the Bible? Solomon. Solomon asked for wisdom in the word of God. And Solomon did that in, 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 in God granted him wisdom. Um, in 1 Kings uh, chapter 3 is the story of Solomon asking for wisdom. And God asked Solomon one night, he comes to the Lord, um, uh, the Lord appears to Solomon during a night in a dream, and God asked him, God said, ask for whatever you want, and I'll give it to you. Ask for whatever you want, and I'll give it to you. And Solomon answered in this way, what would you ask for? Think about that. If God came to you in a dream of night and said, ask for whatever you want, what would it be that you asked for? Solomon answered in this way. He said, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in the heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given me a, have, have given him a son to throw sit on his throne this very day. So Solomon was recognizing what God had already done for his family, right? That God had been faithful to his father, and, and today God was bringing Solomon to this very moment, that God was in the midst of that moment with him. And now, he goes on to say, Now, Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father, David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out the duties. He says, now you may be king, but I'm not sure what to do. Have you ever been in that position? Maybe none of us have been made king, but you're not, not, not necessarily always sure what to do. And, and, and where does he turn for his help? He turns to the Lord. It's where he's asking for help when we don't know what to do. Where's a good place to turn? The Bible says turn to the Lord, right? And he's turning to the Lord. Your servant is here among your people and have frozen a great people too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and distinguish between right and wrong for those who are able to govern the people of yours. He asked for what? A discerning heart that we talk about Solomon's wisdom. He asked for this discerning heart that God would help him distinguish between right and wrong. The Lord was pleased with what Solomon had asked. So the Lord said to him, since you have asked me, not this, uh, have asked for this and not for longer life or wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for death of your enemies, but for, for the discernment of administrating justice, I will do what you've asked. God said, because you've asked I'm, of this, I'm going to ask you to do this. I will also give, uh, I will do what you ask. I will give you wise and discerning hearts so that you will never have anyone like you 
or nor will there ever be. Right? So who's the wisest man? Solomon. Why? Because God said, boom, I'm going to give you this and there's never going to be anyone like you. So that wisdom of Solomon is there. And he writes Proverbs, by the way. If you want to jump into the wisdom book, that's a good one. Moreover, I give you, uh, moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for. God said, because you've asked, good, I'm going to give you more. Both for wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equals among you as king. And if you walk, now here's the kicker to this, right? So I'm going to give you all this stuff, but here's what you need to do. If you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands as David your father did, I will give you a long life. Then Solomon awoke and realized this was a dream. Now what we know about Solomon is he did a pretty good job most of the time. But guess what Solomon was? He was human. And guess what he did from time to time? He didn't get it right. He even failed. Even the wisest man in the world failed from time to time. He, he kind of didn't always do the right thing. And even, the, even in that failure, God was with him, right? Even in the midst of that. And that's what we need to remember for us. Even when we fail, guess what? God is with us. Uh, walking in the ways of, 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 of God are, are stable and are, uh, creates a stability. And, and walking in, in, the, in the ways of the world and, um, can be, bring us instability. And, and the idea that the, the psalmist writes about is two different things. Did you hear what he wrote about? He wrote, wrote about a tree and he wrote about a shack. Shack. All right, he wrote about the tree that, that's planted by the water and, and by the stream, and it yields good fruit. Now, how many of you have ever had a fruit tree? Anybody? Does it yield the same thing every year? Why not? Maybe because of the weather conditions, right? Maybe because the things are going on around it. It doesn't bear the same fruit. Maybe because it's grown larger. Uh, it, 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 it's bearing more fruit. Maybe because it was pruned well, it's bearing more fruit. There's different reasons why we bear fruit, and there's different reasons why we don't bear fruit. But one of the things that God says is that we will bear fruit. Um, we'll bear fruit because we're in his word. Now, the, the, the wicked person, he, he compares to chaff. And you know what chaff is? Does anyone know what chaff is? It's the husk of the plant, right? It's the unworthy part. It's not, it's not the part that they want. When they were beating uh, wheat on the threshing floor, what were they trying to get off? Seeds. They were trying to get the seeds, and they were separating it from the chaff, right? The chaff is lighter weight than the seeds, and it would blow away in the wind. So the psalmist is talking about something folks knew a lot about. I, I'm, I'm not really, I'm not big in, in producing seed and chaff and all those things, but I understand that, right? That, that when, when there's the good stuff you're after, the bad stuff has to go away. That when the good stuff is, is there, we have to put some of the bad stuff away. And he's saying the wicked stuff is kind of like that. There's some things that can distract us from God. We have all kinds of distractions, amen, in our life. There's all kinds of things that can distract us from God. Um, and some of the things that we run after day after day. Have you ever heard anyone say, I'm in the rat race? You know what that means. We're spending a lot of time in the world when we're running the rat race. Right? We're spending a lot of time running that, that, that worldly thing. There's you know, the things that people chase after power, wealth. Um, honor, all these kinds of different things that we, we, we chase after and, and, and some of that is okay, but it's not what we're supposed to be chasing after. What we're supposed to be chasing after is God. What we're supposed to be running to is God. Blessed are we when we put our trust in God and find our inner joy in Christ. That's where the blessing truly is in our life. When we find God in that way. Chap will be blown away by the wind and and the rebellion and destruction will be there, right? But God's truth is there by living in God's ordinance. So, so the psalmist is talking about living about the ways of God. And, and verse 6 says this. If we're living in the ways of God, here's what we get. For the Lord watches over us the ways of the righteous, but the ways of the wicked lead to destruction. Right? When, we, when we're living the wicked way, guess what happens? When we're li living the ways that we know we're not supposed to do, when we're choosing our sin over God, guess what happens? It's pretty destructive, right? 
But when we're living God's way over the sins of our of desires of our heart, guess what happens? We have a more fruitful relationship. Sometimes God has to prune us, amen? Yes. Sometimes God has to, to water us. But sometimes we need to understand that we need to eat as that tree did from the water. And we need to be planted close to God's water in our life. We need that living water for you and for me. So as we, as we leave today, let us think about this question once again. This is only a question that you can answer. I can't answer it for you. You can answer it for yourself. What feeds your soul? What is it that you're using to feed your soul? That's the question. Think about it this week. I won't ask you for an answer. Maybe I will. Should I ask you for an answer? Let's vote. No, let's not do that. <laughs> no, no votes. But think about what is it that feeds your soul? As we leave today and we're walking in God's word, what is it that's going to feed our soul as we move into this year? Is it going to be the word of God or is it going to be the ways of the world? I hope you choose the word of God. Let's pray this morning. Gracious and loving God, Lord, we pause this morning to give you glory. Lord, we thank you for this chance to gather together as a, as a people of God, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your calling in our life. We, Lord, we thank you for the ways that you move. Lord, we thank you for the ways you woo us uh, and love us, Lord. May we be wooed back into your word. May, may we uh, see it as something that's uh, an important part of our life. And we give you glory this day and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Closing him today is Trust and Obey. It'd be on PowerPoint, or it's on page 467 and 467.
call upon the name of Jesus. We just sang it. We're to trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but what? Trust and obey. Go forth trusting. Go forth obeying. Go forth in this peace. And all God's people say. Amen.